this photograph here, you're probably thinking, why have I shown you a picture of a, a suburban street? It happens to be in Blackpool, which is quite interesting for this uh, discussion because what it shows is a big crack. And that crack was very famous in Blackpool for a short time because it purportedly appeared after an earthquake which was related to fracking rather nearby. And uh, people said that the frack had appeared, the crack had appeared in the bridge, and people also said that motorbikes had fallen over and that, and that traffic lights stopped working and things like that. Now, the BGS detected this earthquake, and our view was there's no way that the energy of the earthquake could have caused that crack. And in fact, if you read the article which was attached to this photograph, if you got right down to the bottom, it said an old Blackpool man said, in fact, that crack has been there since 1972. So, um, but this, this characterizes the argument of shale gas, that there's an awful lot of stuff going on which you can't tell is true or false. This is again Blackpool, um, and Blackpool, and that, uh, there are people saying on websites that Blackpool, uh, the coast of Blackpool is at risk of sinking below sea level, and our sea, uh, sea defenses will have to be rebuilt. Essentially, there is no foundation whatsoever to this. Uh, it simply won't happen. It's ridiculous. So th this is going to be a little bit of, uh, of the spirit of my talk. So to a bit of science, I'm sorry to show you a graph so early, but this is a famous graph from um, Pakala and Sokolow's science paper from 2004. And these wedges are a bit like uh, a scientific unit of climate abatement, if you like. So what is a wedge? Well, a wedge would be... Uh, doubling global nuclear power. A wedge would be uh, converting 2 billion cars from 30 miles per gallon to 60 miles per gallon. Another one is uh, CCS on 800 power stations. And another one is gas. Now, uh, lamentably, there are very few figures about whether shale gas or natural gas is truly more green than other kinds of gas or other kinds of energy. The modeling and the work, the studies haven't been done in sufficient detail. There is something that was published by the European Commission about a month ago, which was about shale gas in relation to other energy types. And what they said was in Poland, it's extremely dependent for its electricity on coal, something like 90% of its electricity is generated from coal. If Poland converted overnight to shale gas power stations, which you probably would like to do, it would cut its emissions by 41 to 49% which is a very large cut, so Poland would immediately become a lot greener. But what about the world? Well, essentially, if we take the high gas scenario of the IEA from the golden rules for a golden age of gas, um, it, it doesn't add up, because they say that if you did the high gas use scenario, you'd get 3.5 degrees C percent warming, which is highly dangerous. But of course, gas could be part of a wedge. It doesn't have to be a series of wedges. It could be one wedge. But there is a problem, and this is where I'm going to make my pitch to you. There's a real problem with these wedges. I said that there are several wedges that have been described. One, shale gas. Two, nuclear, double global nuclear power. Three, 800 uh, CCS operations on 800 power stations. Unfortunately, the public won't have it because all of them have the same problem. The same lack of belief amongst the public, and that might feed through to policymakers and investors as well. They worry about it. The earth is scary. People are frightened of earthquakes. Look at this. A Somerset expert reckons that if you do shale gas in the Mendips, it will turn into a volcano. And people believe it. You know, they, people believe it. And, and this is the quality of the debate that's out there. You know, I'm not saying that shale gas is the answer. I'm not saying that CCS is. I'm not saying that double global nuclear power either is. But it's, it's a problem because if you, if you want to do these things, they're all geological. And the public, you know, have many, many questions about the, the feasibility and the safety of it. I'm arguing that science needs to take a stronger role in this, particularly independent science, to assess the risk and to do it publicly and transparently and openly, and to talk about what's low risk, things we don't have to worry about, like volcanoes and Blackpool disappearing under the, the Irish Sea. High risk things, and there are high risk things, there are things that we should worry about, like methane getting into water supplies, for example. These are things we should think about. If we did that, we might get a better quality debate, we might actually get better policy as well. Thanks. <laughs>